Okay, we're on. Okay. Township of Precipity, Troy Hills, regular Township Council meeting of February 24th, 2015. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in accordance with the requirements of the open public meetings law by filing the notice in the office of the Township Clerk and by posting the meeting notice on the bulletin board at the Municipal Building on January 8, 2015, where it has remained posted since that date. A legal notice appeared in the daily record on January 12, 2015 and in the Star Ledger on January 14, 2015. It was forwarded by fax to local newspapers and local radio stations on January 8, 2015. Note, council meetings are videotaped and aired on Cablevision Public Access Channel 21 at 11 o'clock a.m. on Sundays and are also available for viewing at www.parsippany.net. Please rise for the flag salute. Mr. Stanton, if you would. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mr. DePiro. Here. Mr. Peluso. Present. Mr. Stanton. Here. Mr. Valori. Here. Council President Carifi. Here. Also present, Mayor James R. Barbario, Ellen M. Sandman, Business Administrator, Paula Cazzarelli, Assistant Business Administrator, Justin Marchetta, Esquire, covering for John Inglesino, Township Attorney, Yancey Wazermas, Township Clerk, and Ann M. Cucci, CFO. Upcoming meetings, March 10th, 2015 at 7.30 p.m. Agenda meeting, March 17th, 2015 at 7.30 p.m. Regular meeting. At this time, <clears throat> I would also like to welcome Senator Panaccio. Thank you. Okay, at this time we're going to have a few presentations. Mayor. Hi, Elvis, Captain. Am I correct? I won't say it. <laughs> I'm going to be doing a proclamation tonight. An individual, I don't think, knows it's for, for her. So, Jane Beeline, will you please come up? What did they tell you? How'd they get you here? They told me that we're getting a DP presence. Oh. oh, we are? That yeah, wasn't yeah, made up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. 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 Are you trying out for the part of Robocop? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's all these pictures. This I don't, know, like, I don't wow. like singing. <laughs> wow. Township of Proximity Troy Hills Proclamation. This is big, Jane, so I got to. Whereas the Township of Proximity Troy Hills is proud to pay tribute. To Jane Beeline, who was hired on January 8, 1990, and is celebrating 25 years as library director, and whose public role has kept the Parsippany Library System one of the finest in the state of New Jersey, excuse me, the finest in the state of New Jersey, and a vibrant and important part of the community. And whereas Parsippany's library services have flourished and adapted with the changing needs of our residents due to the energy and perseverance of Jane Beeline. A true, a true gift to our community, Jane has always been an inspiration and quiet but powerful leader who has been able to achieve great things. And whereas the Parsippany Library System has grown and expanded under the leadership of their accomplished director, who with the determination and dedicated staff oversaw the renovation of the former main library and addition of the meeting room and children's space in 1992, the renovation of Lake Hiawatha Branch in 1994, Founded the nonprofit Parsippany Library Foundation in 2003, the relocation and total renovation of the former New Jersey Bell Telephone Building on Halsey Road to accommodate the new main library in 2006, the conversion of Mount Tabor Branch to an express library in 2010, applied for and received numerous federal and state grants for the library in excess of $1 million, and administered and received funding for the remediation project of the main library as a result of the damage from Hurricane Irene in 2011. And whereas Jane's professional affiliation are many and have included memberships in the American, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania Library Association, 
Being a former board member of the library, Link NJ, past president and treasurer of the Highlands Regional Library Cooperative, vice president-elect of Maine Morris Automated Information Network, and former secretary treasurer and transition team member, secretary, board member, conference chairperson, and member of the Strategic Planning Committee of New Jersey Library Association and current NJLA representative to the American Library Association Council and member of the SWAT team <laughs> okay, of the New Jersey State Library. Did you take that book? I know. <laughs> Whereas aside from Jane Beeline's very public and important library's roles, she has managed to excel in other areas of community involvement. She was an energetic board member on the PAL, the Parsimony Daycare Center and Adult Education Department, charter member, former president, and George Hickson awards recipient of the Kiwanis Club of Greater Parsippany, a member of Craftsman's Farm Community and Committee. And whereas, with conviction and integrity, and still after 25 years, Jane Beeline continues to nurture and expand the program of Parsippany Libraries to become more efficient, more sustainable, and remain the treasured resource for residents and visitors that it has become. Now therefore, I, James R. Barbera, the mayor of the Township of Parsippany Troy Hills, to hereby proclaim February 24th, 2015 as Jane Beeline Day. Aww. We publicly recognize and acknowledge the important contributions and devotion of this gracious, dedicated, experienced, knowledgeable library director who goes above and beyond every day to ensure the success of Parsippany Library dated this 24th day of February 2015. That's for you. Congratulations. It's not the holidays, <laughs> grateful, but I, I need to point out that without the help of the Board of Trustees, the staff, and the friends of the library, as well as the past mayors, the present mayor, the council, and township administration, and the township department heads, and of course, my family, yes. uh -huh. I couldn't have done the work for, to help um, better our library system. Um, I, I just wanted to mention, because people found out that it was my 25th anniversary, they were, um, they were talking about how um, one of the reporters said, well, what did you say you were going to do when you first started? And I said that I was going to improve the library buildings, right? I had no idea what I was talking about back then. <laughs> but the other one that I thought was pretty clever was, I said I was, the library would try to stay in step with the latest technology. And if you think about 25 years ago, you can think about how much technology has changed. So I really do need to thank everyone here. Um, my board really kept this a uh, shocking surprise. <laughs> um, and so did my staff. I didn't even know all of you that I did. I mean, it was like a nice review. Yeah. <laughs> nice review. But I do want to thank council and the mayor and township administration for all your support of the library. You're what makes the library happen, and and it's really a wonderful place in our community. And our new um, our new motto for this year is the library is the heart of the community, and I truly believe that. So Absolutely. thank you very much. Senator Panaccio. Oh, Senator Stern. Hi. <laughs> I, I came to congratulate Jane on her retirement because I didn't read the proclamation, but I did take time out to read the proclamation now. I do want to echo what you said, and I want to share a short story with you. 
a library is an integral part of, uh, of the community. It's an integral part of my life. Uh, when we were eight years old, um, first generation, um, my parents had come over from the other side. There was three of us, uh, and we sort of stood together because there was a language barrier. We moved from Long Island to Brooklyn, and in Brooklyn, three blocks away, there was a public library. And the reason that I ventured into the public library is because I heard it was free. So I walked into the public library, and it changed my life. I got a public library card for free, and I managed, even in those days, it was, it was a little bit of a, um, a hardship, but I managed to get 10 cents and had the card laminated. I became part of that community I was in. That in started changing my life. It opened up a whole new vista of things that I could do, places I could go, things I could see in my mind, and it got me interested in math and in science, and eventually got me interested in which I became uh, a profession. I don't remember what I had for breakfast this morning, but that was 53 years ago, and I remember it like it was yesterday. I almost remember the smell of the library, and the librarian going, yeah. shh. <laughs> <laughs> the good news is, uh, the bad news is that we don't have a day named after you today, but the good news is this is a proclamation from the state, and we have not named a tax there. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations on 25 years. Thanks. I'm so happy that you continue with this day. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have visited him many times, <laughs> and he's one of those people who, if you bring out a problem to him, he'll say, let me make a phone call, and he does when you're sitting there. So I do appreciate all your support of public libraries. That's a phone call. Thank you for your 25 years. Uh, no, nice. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Senator. Good night. Okay, at this time we'll have a presentation from ADP. Jane, I'm your surprise to get you here. You're a <laughs> gift, right? well, congratulations on your 25 years. So, good evening. My name is David White. I'm a division vice president at ADP, and this is Joe Mullaney, uh, vice president at ADP. Uh, it's a privilege and honor to be here. As many of you may or may not know, ADP has significant presence here in Parsippany. We have our East Service Center that services all of our clients on the East Coast, right on Jefferson Road. Uh, representing about 1,300 employees, and we also have our major count division headquarters located right across the street uh, at One Waterview Boulevard. Um, one of the core values of ADP is social responsibility and um, making sure that we give back to the community that we work and live. So uh, we're here today with a few gifts that we'd like to present to the Township of Parsippany in the form of, of gifts here. Uh, if I could ask the, actually, we'll have Jane come up. She's first on our list. <laughs> uh, we have a donation for the library. Wow. Excellent. An amount of uh, $2,000. I have several to give to the public library. There you go. Thank you. And this is for you. Um, your donation every year to pay for summer reading programs for the kids, um, motivational programs, entertainment, you know, to get them to read. So um, we have in here the statistics of our reading oh. club um, and, a, and two mugs for oh, you so. and some for <laughs> So there you go. Congratulations. <laughs> Looking short. Looking good. 
we all played the resignation for $2,000 donation also. We have something to do with it, though. Wow. We have a plaque that says, to the officers and employees of ADP, thank you for your continuing support of the Percent Beach Oils Fire Department. February 24th, 2015. Nice. I think they're going to want to know. Thank you. You look sharp. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Stay after. Guys, they want to get a nice photo off there. Thank you. Be safe. Excellent. Police department or symphony. There he goes. Typical Dave. <laughs> Ambulance squad. All right. Next. Everybody's here. That's great. <laughs> we didn't bring it. We didn't bring them anything. Huh? <laughs> Your presence is giving them speedy service. Yeah, right. Ah, it's nice. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, at this time we'll have a presentation on the Manor Lake Dam project. I'm, I'm gonna, I'd like to ask uh, our engineer, uh, Justin Lisa, to in, introduce the folks that are going to speak this evening. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Good evening. Uh, tonight we have uh, representatives from Cherry on? Weber Associates. Uh, they're the, the sorry. They're the uh, design consultants we hired to do the um, design and permitting for the Manor Lake Dam. So uh, what I'll do is I'll turn it over to them. They can bring you up to date on where we stand with the permitting and the design process. It's okay. I'd just like to bring the microphone over closer. You can, you can take right it right out, right out of the stand if you want. Oh, you can better. take it right out. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody together. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is... I think you're going to have to really talk into it. I, I can't hear it that well. Yeah, if you could just hold it up to your mouth. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Ted Giannichini. I'm the president and CEO of Cherry Weber & Associates. Uh, with me tonight are Greg Bitsko and Steve Gamba. Uh, Greg is our freehold office manager, and he's also our senior structural engineer. Uh, Steve is the project manager for this project. He's an expert in hydraulics and hydrology. He's also very familiar, familiar with dam design and reconstruction. And uh, he basically took this job over once our original project manager, who was Bill Mercurio, had a serious accident last summer, 
Um, Bill is home right now. He's able to work part-time, but we needed a full-time resident or project engineer for this work. That's why we appointed Steve. Our mission here tonight is to review the scope of work with everybody. We wanted to go through the, uh, the status, where we are in the project, and we're looking to do a question and answer session so that we can answer any questions you may have. And what we plan on doing, we know that it's kind of difficult to see these exhibits. So once Steve gives his presentation on what's going on with the project itself, we're going to move these out into the hallway and so you can come up close and personal and review these very closely without disrupting the rest of the council meeting. Uh, we also plan on going through the project schedule to show you exactly where we are and where we anticipate that we will have completion. <coughs> so that said, I'd like to turn this over to our project manager, Steve Gompa. Thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to pre uh, present this to you. I understand it's been a long time coming and we definitely understand the, the delays and the anxiousness of everyone. So thank you for allowing us to present this. Um, and like Ted said, we will move these boards out to the hallway so everyone can get a closer look and ask the questions and really see the, the documents we brought with you. Um, so as a history, the past, it's been of several years now, the project has been in the permitting phase with dam safety. And the first step when working on a design project for a dam, we have to establish a design storm for a dam. And the, the key is for the dam to act as safely without breaching and causing inundation of downstream properties and waterways. Um, so the first step of that whole thing is going to dam safety, developing the flows that are in the drainage area, draining down towards the dam, towards the reservoir. And the past few years, that finally got approved in August 2014. Um, so with that being said, the dam now finally has a spillway design storm that we can design to, and we know now what, we, what parameters we have to include in the design. Um, and the, the dam, part of that is classifying the hazard classification of the dam. This dam is classified as a class two significant hazard dam. As part of that classification, dam safety usually requires a design storm of a probable maximum precipitation storm, which is 34 inches in 24 hours in this area. We were able to downgrade that design storm to a 100-year storm, which is only 8.3 inches. It's a lot smaller volume. It allows us to have a much smaller dam, a much smaller spillway, so it's, it's a lot cheaper to construct. So. That was all handled in August of 2014. After that time, we, we progressed forward with designing the dam. Um, we had plans available to us from the prior engineering firm. And revi revisiting those plans, we saw that there was some missing information. So recently, you've seen our survey crews out, out there surveying. We've been locating property corners. We've been locating the right of way property lines, um, documenting the topography of the area so that we can design the dam, the elevations that we have to meet. Um, we've had an environmental subconsultant out there identifying where wetlands are. Uh, we had another subconsultant out there gathering sediment samples to test to analyze whether there was any contaminants that we needed to worry about in the disposal of the sediments. So the environmental assessment part has been completed now as well. Survey is almost complete. We have another day or two of field time that we need to just finalize property corners um, and just finalizing some topo. At this point now, we are progressing forward with the design of the dam, taking that design storm that we developed, and we're working, we are developing that design of the dam, that, which involves the hydraulic sizing of the spillway. Uh, so along with the design of the, the physical characteristics of the spillway, what we have to do is um, div acquire all of the necessary permits. Um, with, the, with the dam, there's Obviously, water involved. Where there's water, there's wetlands involved. Since there's wetlands, we have 
wetlands permitting to acquire. We have to acquire a wetlands general permit for the dam repair, or in this case, reconstruction. We're going to require a wetlands individual permit for dredging of the sediment that's in the lake so we can remove the sediment that's accumulated since the last time it was dredged, which I believe is in 1988. Um, we have to acquire a permit from the dam safety section of DEP for the construction of the dam. Soil Conservation District will be involved due to the area of disturbance. So we have to have a soil erosion plan certification from them. Due to the area of disturbance anticipated, we also have to have another DEP permit for discharge of stormwater. Another general permit from them. And finally, there's a permit from DEP from Fish and Wildlife, which is a water lowering permit. And that permit's going to allow us to lower the water then come in, remove the sediment from the lake. So there's a lot of permitting that we're going to be working on. As those permits move forward, and once they're submitted, all of the permit documents are going to be available here at Town Hall for everyone's review. So everyone can keep kind of keep tabs on how the progress is going. Um, we have here a schedule. Um, we have field work, which so just almost complete, a little bit remaining. So we have that wrapping up in by mid-March of this year. Engineering design and the permit preparation. I have that uh, going through to the end of May. At the end of May, we anticipate all of that's going to be wrapped up and the permits are going to be submitted to the various parties, specifically NJDEP, since they have the longest lead time in reviewing the applications and all of the calculations that go along with this. So by the end of May, we anticipate all the submissions are going to be made. And then there's going to be four months of review, um, back and forth coordination between us and DEP. By the fall of this year, bidding and award should be feasible permit should be in hand and we can then go work with the town get the project put out to bid and then contract can be awarded either in the winter or wait until the spring we'll see how the schedule goes there are timing restrictions with a lot of these permits and we don't know those timing restrictions for sure until the permits are issued and the various agencies are able to review all of the, the documents and a lot of that has to do with the fish that may or may not be in the water, um, endangered species. So DEP takes a look at all of the documents that is submitted and they develop timing restrictions that we have to comply with. So the big question, construction. Spring of 2016 is when we anticipate construction to be happening. with construction wrapping up by, by the fall of 2016. Um, one of these, this is going to be very difficult to see, so I'll go over this outside in the hallway. But this is just a, a basically a diagram of what we anticipate the dam to look like, as if you were to cut a section line through the dam and you're looking down the center of the dam. So basically, we're just widening it out. And I'll go over this outside in the hallway too, but we're, I'm just docu we're documenting what the water surface elevation is today, um, what the 100 year, which is their, our design storm, the 100 year, what that elevation is today in today's conditions. And we're just showing that the water elevation is going to be the same moving forward, the same or lower. Um, one of the design restrictions we have in coming up with a dam design is make sure we don't negatively impact anyone upstream, anyone downstream, basically maintain the same water elevations, the same flows. We don't want to negatively impact anyone upstream or downstream. And that is all I have. Greg, did you have anything? Yes. OK. Um, hi, everybody. I know. <laughs> A lot of the questions are, why are we taking this long to be at this point? And a lot of this has been going back and forth with the uh, getting concurrence from DEP on the design storm. Um, 
it was a major effort to actually get them to reduce the level of uh, storm that we have to design for. That took quite a bit of time. It's going to save a lot of cost. But during this process, the other thing we were trying to do originally was trying to fit the new project into what the old plans were as best as we could. Um, during the design process, we realized that as a result of the negotiations or during the negotiations with the EP, the agreed upon storm event was actually higher, provided more flow than what this original design was based on. And with that, what, what would have happened with that is the water surface would have increased, um, which DEP would not permit. It, was, it would actually result in more impacts on the adjacent properties. So we, we spent a little bit of time trying to go back, and, and, and we don't like to reinvent the wheel, but we think we, we invented a better wheel in this case because what we were able to do is uh, we're pro proposing to change the design. The original design was a, a very um, costly concrete uh, spillway for 120 feet long. Um, and again, that design would have increased the water surface with the new flows that DEP agreed to. We talked to um, dam safety, uh, suggested a much simpler design to them, which is basically to come in with a sheet pile core wall, leave most of the fillets in place, armor the banks for the full length, which is about 200 feet. So the, the work goes about 200 feet, but it reduces the cost significantly, and, and DEP is more favorable to that design. So it's a simpler design, it's a less expensive design, and um, it's more favorable with DEP. So that was a, a major effort that we've been putting forth more recently. Steve, the, the diff we ran some very ballpark numbers just to give you some idea what the magnitude of that savings is for construction. 500,000. So we, we were looking at the original estimate for the concrete spillway being in the order of 500,000, again, order of magnitude. We're in, let's just, let's just round it up because that sounds crazy, but you know, we're, we're in around the 150 range for the new dam design. Awesome. So again, no guarantee, you know, there's, there's contingencies, you know, we assume, because what we're doing is armoring with riprap and stone, it depends on how far the riprap goes out, so that may change, but even if it goes up to 200,000, you're still at less than half the price of the original d dam, so, and it's a more favorable design, so we think that's a, Pretty positive benefit overall for everybody on this. And that's, the dam itself. that's the dam itself, not the dredging, <laughs> not the totally right. So that that's um, one positive that's coming out of this, and, and we you know it's been a a little bit of an effort. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, it, depending on what the council wants, we can either answer questions beginning in here right now, or we can go out in the hallway and, and deal with that as you proceed with your meeting. It's, I would just say if you have. If any of the council members have questions, we can ask you those, and then fine. you can go out in the hallway. Okay, that's fine. I'm sure there's some residents who probably have some questions for you. Sure. Thank you. Council President? Sure. Go ahead. Uh, I would like a copy of your, your uh, time chart, if that's possible. Sure. Okay, we can, we can leave that here tonight. Well, I'm not taking that home. Give me a small one. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a small one. Break it down. We can, I can, we can do that. We'll take care of it. Okay, yes. thank you. <laughs> In fact, if you could get the, the whole presentation, um, you know, in a, in a capsulized form, that I can give it to both the mayor and the whole council, that would be great. If you can, we should be able to scan these electronically and okay. send them over. We'll scan them and get you everything. Thank you, Ellen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, council President, I have a question uh, concerning. Uh, it's unrelated to the dam itself, but the circulation of the water behind the dam. Uh, is there any type of device that's going to circulate the water to prevent uh, weeds and, and vegetation from overgrowing into the lake itself? You mean on, on the sides of the lake or the, the stuff that grows on top of the lake? Some type of aeration device that would prevent the water from becoming stagnated behind the dam itself. Yeah, I think, I think what we're seeing right now is some of the... Okay. Okay, fine. <laughs> there is uh, out, there are so no plans as part of the dam work to put in any kind of aeration systems, um, but we do have it uh, planned for once the work is completed, we'll have it done in cooperation with uh, the Park and Forestry Department uh, because they'll be maintaining that. So, so they'll, ins they'll install it? They, yeah, we'll have it installed or have a contractor install it, but it'll be maintained by us. But that'll be something we'll um, be looking at once all this other work Great. is completed. Justin, will the specs of the aeration affect any of the work that they're doing on the dam, or they, do they need to be cons consulted on that first? You know, no, like that? the aeration system is just a, it's, it, there's a bunch of different types. Some of them uh, take the water and spray it up in the air like a big fountain. Others are um, um, air-driven, where you put uh, these diffusers at the bottom of the lake, 
that um, um, a compressor pumps air through it and it helps circulate the water. We'll, we'll look at the different types, uh, see which one Parks and Forestry is more comfortable with maintaining, uh, and decide on that afterwards. But it have no effect on uh, the dam at itself or, or the construction. Okay, good. Because for the benefits of the residents, I want to make sure that water is aerated so this way there's not an increase in vegetation and bugs and mosquitoes, et cetera. Uh, and, and it's an eyesore. I've seen it myself already. So. Oh, absolutely. And, and the uh, the new depth that the lake will be at after we dredge, <laughs> right. the aeration system will help that considerably. Very good. Thank you. It's great. Thank you. And I think also if you look at the uh, surface of the lake in the warmer months, you'll see algae and growth laying on top. That should disappear once the dam and spillway are properly constructed because what's happening right now, the water is seeping out at a lower level and the upper level is not draining off like it should. So that will be corrected also. Great. Great. Any other questions? No. Okay. Uh, <coughs> yes, would, would it be a... Yes. Uh, um, we're talking about the dam. And we had just a brief question about the dredging. Got to use a microphone. But I don't, I'll talk louder. I don't think I because at this point we're in. No, no, sir. We, uh, yeah, it's, it's it records. All right, we're talking about the dam, but we're not talking about dredging right now. And there was a, there was a comment, and forgive me, my wife says I need my glasses, but I don't know. <laughs> vanity. Um, in an 8-7 letter from the DEP, it alluded to the fact that the dredging may render the SDS, the spillway that you've been talking about, unacceptable and may require future inspections to reevaluate the safety. What's the status of this? And how can you elaborate? Uh, is the dredging going to have an impact on this dam? Because we're talking about downsizing the cost of the dam and, and finding a way around a, an expensive uh, a measure for the dam. But is dredging going to create a problem that this is not going to happen then? And then we go through this permitting process that lasts another three years. Because now we're talking into 2016. <laughs> Good question. Uh, part of the hydraulic calculations that we submit with our spillway design report, which is one of the requirements for the submission to dam safety to approve the construction permit, does include reevaluating the storage volume behind the dam. So basically we have to, what the dredging means is that you're holding more water behind the dam, and what they say in that letter is by increasing your storage volume in the reservoir, if the dam were to breach, there's a higher hazard, theoretically, downstream because you're withholding, you're holding more water back. So a breach of the dam could result in more water rushing downstream. So I've run those calculations with the expected volumes of water with an additional three foot of material removed from the bottom of the lake. So I have that additional storage already calculated, and it's not going to impact the, the hazard classification of the dam. So that has been addressed, and it will be submitted in the, the submission to dam safety. That's right. We're going to have more question and answers outside because I've got a number. Sir, of could you just state, just okay. give us your name and address, sir, just so we have that on the Pat record. Farnan, 23 Lakeside okay, Drive. Thank you. All right. Thank you. They'll be available for any questions that any residents have. <laughs> Council Thank President, you. so if we could yeah. just give him a couple more. Yes, just to, okay. You know. Okay, we'll clean up our Good. stuff. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So if there are any residents that have any questions. You can head out into the hallway, and they'll be more than happy to answer your questions for you. Why don't you instruct them to call? <laughs> Put the no, move no, down no. by the cashier. If you guys, yeah, if you could just further down. go a ways down the hallway there. Thank yeah, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Justin. Do you want to just take thanks, it down sir. a little bit there? Thank you. Yeah. 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 Great. Thank you. Good job, Justin. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't hope you Justin. John, exactly what we got. Um, I, on behalf of Brian and I, we're happy that we don't have to talk more about the Manor Lake uh, this evening because uh, they did I a good job. Talk, I, I know, I know. <laughs> okay.
Okay, our presentation by the Environmental Advisory Committee is going to be postponed until our next meeting. Bids to be taken, none. Requests for quotations, proposals, qualifications, none. Ordinances, second reading and public hearing. Ordinance number 2015-01, Mr. DePiro. Uh, Council President, before we get to that, I've got two items I'd like to bring up, if I may. Okay. Okay, the first one is this lawsuit that uh, I, I just was delivered to us today. It says, Council of the Township of Parsippany Troy Hills versus James Barberio Mayor. Now, I, I need to have that corrected because the council is not suing the mayor. All right, let me correct that. I'll say it again. The council is not suing the mayor. Okay. We've never discussed it at a public meeting. That's not ours. And we've never voted. That's not ours, Mr. DePiro. That's the mayor's. Who's is this? That's the mayor's. That's my counterclaim. Council. To the to the council? No, the council is suing me. When I got the letter, it says count on behalf of the council as a whole. So you you received one that said the council is suing you. Yes. That's incorrect. The council cannot be suing you because we never voted on the lawsuit. So. That, that should be that should be changed from the whatever that lawsuit was. Individuals can sue anytime they want, but the township council has never voted to sue anything. So that's just Mr. DePero, there was a council vote to form a committee as a whole. There was a vote. The vote was taken, and that council as a whole is looking to hire an attorney. And that is what the, the matter is. All right. Well, first of all, council as a whole is not a whole because I, I don't agree to be on this council as a whole. So it's not a whole. And you voted no. Um, but that does not entitle um, three of you to to speak for the entire council in lieu of, of this council voting. That violates Faulkner Plan E. You can't do that. May I say a few words? Go ahead. Mr. DePiro, that was brought up months ago in regards to that vote. And you had every opportunity to discuss that vote. And as a matter of fact, a Does, lot of this is... Which vote are we talking about? To move forward, vote. to investigate, and the whole matter is coming down to the amount of money, obviously, that is being spent by all the law firms, okay? And the reality is this. If we would have went forward two weeks ago in regards to having an audit, which you voted yes for on the expenditures of $700,000 being billed to us from Aurora, and then obviously all the other expenses of $800,000 plus for John Inglesino, you're the one who decided to flip-flop on the vote. So if, in fact, we would have resolved that, maybe this wouldn't have went even further. But again, if there was an audit that was conducted in regard to expenditures, you're the one who decided to back out on that vote. After you said yes. Uh, bottom line, bottom well, line excuse is. Excuse me one minute, though. I have bottom to, well, line maybe. is the council has never voted to sue anybody, and you, as a as a committee as a whole, whatever you call yourselves, it wasn't cannot Mr. vote. Mr. You're cannot Mr. Vote we did not vote to, to sue the, the mayor. To sue. We formed a committee as a whole, and that committee is looking to hire an attorney. The mayor said, I'm not authorizing you to hire an attorney. So we're going to court to have a judge decide if that committee as a whole can hire an attorney to do a thorough investigation. Okay, so I need, to, I need to clarify one thing, though. When you, when you send me a letter and you send me a filing, you are suing me. It says the uh, Township Council versus the mayor of James Barber, the Township of Port Sibbon for Hill. So, yes, I am being sued. Now... This had nothing to do with the Aurora, I mean, nothing to do with John Inglesino's bills. This had to do with you, one of the former committee, to investigate several several matters here. One that, um, and John, uh, what is it called? Township attorney uh, had a pay-to-pay -pay violation. That was one of them. Um, you know, it, is it really worth talking about it right now? Well, no, it's not. Mr. DePiro brought it up. But right it, no, here's my point, though. It's not everything you said, Councilman Bloy. That had nothing to do with I was served with this. Back in the very beginning of January. So, so let me ask you a question. If you were so served back all. in January, why is your voice, Mr. DePiro, bringing this up now? Well, it's not, he's not my voice. I, I so, didn't. I, so, he went on, he's so on his own. So my point is, we're going to resolve it. So that, okay, that's. Okay, I, I just want to know one thing, Mr. DePiro. I'm not. Are, are you happy let me clarify, with. Let me clarify. Are you this. happy with I'm not expenditures his voice, okay? that are going. Understand. Are you happy with I'm not expenditures his voice. that are going on here? Understand, okay, I'm not his voice. You're fine with that. No, he's not saying. Council, he's not saying that. 
You voted but, for an audit, but, but then you decide to change your vote on audit. Here, you have $1.5 million, as and a matter, no, no, there's no, no, no accountability. As a matter, first of all, you, got, you, got with that, you have the figures okay. wrong, Councilman, on Aurora. All right. Okay, we're not going to. The total was 250000 Okay. These costs, all right, all right, all right. These costs, no. Okay, that's it. These costs are because that's it. Captain James enough. Jeffy would enough. Not follow four court orders. Mr. Barbario, Mr. Barbario, that's exactly Mr. Why Barbario, Mr. Barbario, are high. Janie, I'm asking you to be quiet right now. I'm asking you to stop oh, arguing. Up, okay. Boy. I am asking you, and if I have to, I'm going to ask you one more time. If not, I will have the officer so remove you, you have the from the, the dais. Wait, wait. Yes, I do. do I come. have the authority you to remove you from the dais. You yes, do I do. You do not, Counselor. Yes, I do. Can we, can we go forward, guys? I had, okay. I had one more item before I was interrupted. The other thing is, weren't we supposed to have Aurora make a presentation tonight? Who March they 10th. were? They've been making March it March 10th. I couldn't make today. And we weren't notified about that. I thought they no, were I didn't know that tonight. either. I thought they were going to be here tonight. Started. No, it was March 10th. It was supposed to be tonight. Because right. right. I'm anxious to hear what they have to say, too. And yeah, for $700,000 a bill and right. a lot of questions. I, I don't know what the, what okay. the bill is. But we'll have them tell Speaking them. on the, uh, getting back to Mr. Valori, you brought up something about the audit. Yes. Um, at this time, okay, since we, the mayor denied us uh, moving forward with that audit, um, but the council is authorized to have the annual audit. So at this time, I would like to make a motion to start the annual audit and to have the legal department uh, be the first department that the uh, audit is worked on and that the auditor provide the council with preliminary reports as he's conducting his audit. That is my motion. That we okay. start our annual well, considering audit. Considering you have a like conflict, the that motion. The our attorney. annual audit like of the entire of our entire town, the annual audit of the entire town. Uh, Ann, Ann Kucher could answer you. Yeah, um, it's already started. The um, as a matter of fact, the annual financial statement is already finished, although it's unaudited. With um, and you're more than welcome to. I couldn't upload it today, and also I believe the audit will be completed within the next three weeks. Completed within three weeks. Okay, yes. so within three weeks we'll have so a complete yes. audit. Has legal already been done already? I don't know to the detail that you want. I'll find Can we out. get preliminary reports? Then? Well, you have it in front yeah. of you. I done. have the annual financial statement, but um, we could talk the audit, offline the about. Exactly. That's not the audit, though. That's, that's a financial statement. No, that's it's just the, part of it. This is what goes to the state. Okay, but you're you're telling us that the the audit will be complete in three weeks. I believe three weeks, yes. or at least close to it. Okay, so the, the we're way un, well underway. It started already about uh, three weeks ago. So let me ask you a question, Ann. This is not to put you on the spot here. That's okay. No. You're saying three weeks is going to be completed. So obviously, you guys reviewed what's going on so far. So is anything with the legal in that so far that's been completed? And if it has been completed. You like to get a copy of it? Sure. Okay. So yeah. some of that stuff's already been completed, you're saying? Well, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. So before we leave here tonight, then we'll get a copy of it. Well, I could give you whatever this is. I don't have anything. It has the legal, the legal it's got, expenditures? Um, yes, I believe it does. Because I know last I'll year when we did you. last year's budget, we authorized 400000 in legal. And right. we basically doubled that. So we're up to 800000 this well, last year. So that's, I'd like to see those numbers. You, you want to see the deep? Well, I'll show you what I have here. And then um, I'll speak to the auditors to get a little more detail That'd for you. But I just want you all to know that we did start this and well underway and will be complete, not in November. <laughs> okay, great. Next few weeks. And, and ju just, just so there's no misunderstanding, what, what Ann is saying is we, we have about six or about five or six auditors here, and we've had them here. Yeah, I've seen for them. The You've seen them, yes. okay, for the last. And it, it's, it's not, they're doing all their. Uh, paperwork or their due diligence and so th it's not like a piece where we can just pick out a piece like that that's why I think Anne is not being hesitant she's just saying that w it'll be it should be all completed by within the next three weeks however what she does have is although it's called the unaudited of course the auditor has already reviewed it and looked at it and uh, proved right. that the numbers are correct in there so um, Anne can get you that and then if whatever parts we can get from the um, the uh, auditors tomorrow to see what what their paper papers look like. A quick question, because I've been waiting. I spoke to Yancey. She's been trying to work on it for me. I've asked for the 1099s for all the law firms that have done work for the town. 
The ones that I have so far for all the law firms were over a million dollars easily. So I hope I could get those 1099s for 2014 before I leave here today. I thought that was provided. No, I did not get them. I was I'm cutting. sorry? The two years, I mean. Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't, okay. Remember you were going to see her. I thought it was already done. I apologize yeah. for that. But I know based on the, what I have. You know what? Here it is. Dollars. If they are already done, it's just that I think the, the copies were misplaced um, okay. the, in, the, in the, the clerk's office. So hopefully when I leave her tonight, I can get them. Absolutely. Great. Absolutely, because yeah. they've been done, and that's why Ann said okay. what she said. Okay. Very good. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. DePiro. Back to the agenda? Yes. That's great. Okay. Ordinance is for second reading, ordinance number 2015-01, an ordinance amending chapter 169, fire prevention of the revised general ordinances of the township of Pacific Troy Hills requiring red lights to designate all fire department connections. The notice of the ordinance above was published in the Daily Record, the official newspaper of the township of Pacific Troy Hills on January 16, 2015. Second. Motion made by Mr. DePiro, seconded by Mr. Stanton. Roll call. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Peluso. Yes. Mr. Stanton. Yes. Mr. Valori. Yes. Mr. Carifi. Yes. Okay, at this time, entertain a motion open up a public hearing on this. So moved. Matter and this matter only. Motion made by Mr. DePiro, seconded by Mr. Peluso. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, if anyone would like to come up to the mic in reference to this ordinance and this ordinance only. Okay, see no one come forward to entertain a motion to close the public hearing so on moved. ordinance 2015-01. Motion made by Mr. DePiro. Second. Seconded by Mr. Peluso. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Whereas the above ordinance was read in title on second reading and the hearing held thereon, now therefore it be it resolved that said ordinance be passed on final reading and the notice of final passage of said ordinance be published in the newspaper according to law. Second. Motion made by Mr. DePiro, seconded by Mr. Stanton. Roll call. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Peluso. Yes. Mr. Stanton. Yes. Mr. Valori. Yes. Mr. Carifi. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Um, before we move on to the public hearing, I just want to uh, state that I don't know if everyone has read the newspaper, but the lawsuit against uh, filed by R.D. Realty against Persephone was dismissed today by a judge at Superior Court. Yes. Um, I would also like to state that I did give a statement to the press in reference to that, and uh, Mr. Inglesino disputed the amount in legal fees that I uh, stated, which was approximately $150,000, and I would ask Mr. Westhoven since it was his article, I don't know where he went. He, he but went the, I would ask him to Oprah and any other resident that would like to Oprah all of the legal bills dating back to when Mr. Inglesino and the mayor first met with R.D. Realty. And you'll see that that total does add up to approximately $150,000 that it costs the residents of Persephone in legal fees. Easily. So <clears throat> I would just like to say that. And also, um, had they gone the route of going in front of the Board of Adjustment, R.D. Realty would have had to pay for all of the legal fees, which would have cost the residents of this town nothing in legal fees. But instead, they decided to go a different route, which in turn cost the residents of our town again well, approximately $150,000. So uh, had they gone in front of the Board of Adjustment, they would have paid for all attorney fees. Okay, well, they, had, they went for a zone change. So they want to zone change from the planning board, and it has to go to the planning board to go to the council. Right. I'm saying if they had gone the yeah, other way. Yeah, so you, I know. Board they. Of adjustment. So I'm right. Glad. Emphasize that. Right. No, they, yes, if, if, had they gone a different route. But again, I implore uh, Mr. Westhoven and any resident, Oprah, the legal, legal bills, and you'll see from day one till now it's cost about $150,000. Okay, at this time, I entertain a motion to open up a public hearing. Motion. Motion made by Mr. Peluso, seconded by Mr. Valori. Roll call. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Peluso. Yes. Mr. Stanton. Yes. Mr. Valori. Yes. Mr. Carifi. Yes. This time, you'll be given five minutes. If you come to the mic, please sign in, state your name and address.
Richard Rosenthal, 3 Cambridge Road, Mars Plains. That's going to be the standard line. <laughs> Mars Plains. I'm coming before, the uh, before you tonight, and I'm really in an awkward position. I know you guys. I am not a regular. I'm not one of the backbenchers. You see me here periodically, but I know you, and I think you know my affection for the town of Parsippany. What I'm about to say hurts. You know me be before. I have run town, uh, rather town election meetings. At those meetings, they were non-biased. The candidates who appeared before on those evenings, instead of having canned questions asked of them, they were given five minutes, usually, or seven minutes, depending on how video on the go wanted it, or we were, those are the time constraints. You took your minutes before, you took your minutes after, and what I felt that those uh, programs is I wanted you guys to speak without canned questions coming at you. And you had the opportunity to express yourself, and as a result, I feel you expressed yourself, and some of you are sitting here tonight because you got who you were in front of them. That's where I am coming from. This is the part that hurts, and this is where I'm coming from. I came here last week, and I didn't, attend, I didn't speak last week, and I saw what was happening. And as I walked out the door, I was listening to the numbers of the $46,000 for this one, $200,000 for this, $500,000 for this, and it reminded me, as I walked out the door, I said, you know, a number of years ago, before something this was involved, I knew something, somebody had stolen a computer, and I said to the guy, what does it cost a computer? What does it do? He said, oh, God, we got problems. He took a computer. He stole it. You know, we had we were up over ten thousand. You know, we had to spend we had to spend fifteen thousand dollars. Now, I'm listening to these numbers. You guys are rattling off, and then I get a half a million. They're going to knock a half a million dollars off. Who takes a half a million dollars off a bill? And then when it started, now I am not going into what happened tonight at all. What this has nothing to do with the merits of the case today. And I keep thinking about the attorneys' fees, or what we're going to happen here. And this results out of Inglesino's office. Whatever the, Car the story is with Carifi is, he goes for his pension. The town opposes it. We pay an attorney's fee. Carifi wins. I assume we will pay an attorney's fee for Carifi. What those fees are, I don't know. I don't know what they will be. Carifi goes for a gun permit. The town opposes it. We pay a fee. I don't know how many attorneys were involved in that. Karifi wins. We will pay the attorney's fees. Karifi goes for whatever it is, concealed weapon. Nothing happens. They go for an adjournment. The police, somebody, I understand briefly reading online that somebody didn't have an attorney. They give the court an opportunity. We still pay for an attorney to go there. Karifi pays for an attorney. I don't know what's going to happen at the end of this. If he wins, we pay the attorney's fees. So we got three parts. We haven't even started on this point. What's happening here, and this calls the heck out of me. This is where it is. We now have, Mr. Inglesino says, <coughs> on 2013, we, whatever it was, we, we found out or we had the thing, we demanded the computer. And he stands there now, we've got three motions. All of these are attorney's fees. Apparently, what Mr. Karifi is, is he's the puppet master of the attorney's fees for Parsippany. He is calling the shots, we are paying the amounts, and it goes on, and it goes on, and it goes on. Where it's going to stop, I don't know. And yet, it's still going on. If this was important, now Mr. Inglesino said that Karifi lied. I'm not going into the merits of the case. I don't want to go into the merits. This is what Mr. Inglesino said. If he really, really wanted to help us, here's what would happen. I have Blue Cross Blue Shield. Last year, last year, a computer was stolen. Somebody took it out of whatever it was, out of Blue Cross Blue Shield. I got a letter, no, I got an email blast from Blue Cross Blue Shield. It said it's stolen, check your credit, and then it went on to say, we will pay for your credit. Home Depot, it's stolen. Email blast, it's stolen, check your credit, we will pay for your credit. Target, same thing. If this was sincere, if Mr. Inglesino meant this, and he stood there waving the American flag, I'm here to protect the people of Parsippany, and you're going to say to me, what did I do, and how am I protecting you? What he would have said at this point, an email blast would have gone to the people of Parsippany, he said, check your credit, and, okay, it's not part of the budget, but it certainly would have been a heck of a lot cheaper than attorney's fees for somebody to say, look, 
we will monitor the credit, we will pay for the first year, whatever it was, and that would have been the res resolution of the area. And as it stands right now, and I'll blame all of you for this, not one of you said we ought to have this residents of Parsippany check their credit. Something may have happened. I'm not saying it did or it didn't. Time's up, sir. Possibility it happened. Check your credit, and if you're really nice about it, you would have said, okay, if you monitor it, we will pay for it, just as Blue Cross, Blue Shield, or whatever it is. And it's a heck of a lot cheaper than we're doing tonight. And that's what annoys me tonight. Mr. Inglesino is the Loretta Weinberg of Parsippany. Percentage-wise, we are paying more than they're paying for Bridgegate in New Jersey. We are paying more than this. Uh, Loretta S Weinberg, and I figured out that there's something like 16 Loretta Weinbergs. Sir, time's up. On this one case. And that's what it hurts for me to talk. And I apologize. No, I'm not going to apologize. You know me well enough. This is where I am coming from. Can I say Thank you. Yeah. I just like oh. to, and I, I admire your compassion trying to save the taxpayer's money. But I just want to stress to you my compassion. I was sworn in here a year ago, okay? My first meeting where I was briefed on a lot of this information, my major concern was expense involved. And what I was advised was that this gentleman accessed as a server. So access to the server is almost like WikiLeaks, that you're access to the server and you are getting major information confidential. That's what I was advised. Secondly, I had asked Mr. Inglesino, how much have we spent on this case so far? He had told me $80,000 between Aurora and obviously his legal bills. So when I see Aurora, billing us for $700,000, okay, never keep it suppressed, even though we only pay them 300000 and then legal fees, I mean, I at least know Mr. Inglesino's law firm at least made $800,000. What he billed exactly to the town in regards to that case, I don't know. So that is my passion as to find out what the truth is, okay? And if there's anything confidential in nature in regards to this case, I don't want to see it. I want to see the numbers to justify it. And I just find it hard to believe. We got billed for $700,000. We only pay them $200 an hour. So that's 3,500 hours worth of work on one computer. And I will stress to you, I asked them also, why didn't Morris County Prosecutor's Office obviously take over his case when you allege that there was a crime occurring? Because they could have imaged those computers for nothing. They could have imaged those computers for nothing, and then we, the taxpayers, wouldn't be paying for that. So again, $80,000 went for at least over a million dollars now in one year. Council never advised of it. And here's what's interesting too, what we learned from this whole case. I asked, and it's in my notes, right? What policies and procedures have been in place? I'm a brand new guy in the council. It happened a year prior to me coming in. What policies and procedures are in place to prevent this from happening? And know the answer I got? There was none. And here was my major concern. My major concern was the folks that work in finance, I'm not accusing them of anything, they have access to the world on all our records and a lot of other records. What policies and procedures are in place to safeguard? Because again, I always thought that this gentleman accessed a server, which he never accessed a server. And then here's the other problem that we have with our computer system on the police department, which the chief of police never brought to anybody's attention when we did the budget. We have a computer system that overrides itself every three days. So whatever's stored there, it keeps overriding itself, keeps copying over the top of it. So you're never going to be able to get that information. But what has also failed to be realized is hearing testimony about a month ago from our chief of police, where he openly admitted on testimony to a superior court judge over the gun permit, he was asked, have you ever downloaded or deleted, OK? Deleted emails. He said yes. Has he ever downloaded to an accessible hard drive? And I'm not saying he did anything wrong, but again, what procedures are in place? And he even was asked, do you have access to the server? He said, no, I don't have access to the server. Do you think this officer has access to the server? He says, no. What is this coming down to? It's coming down to nothing but propaganda that we're paying, okay, over personalities that are just unreal. I truly wish a mediator would come in and obviously resolve this because it really distracts. But just what really aggravates me, when you have this much in expenses, okay, over one computer, 
And I find it very hard to believe 3,500 hours were looked at at one computer. I find that hard to believe. And I cannot wait to see Aurora because I want to challenge him. And that's why when Mr. DePiro questioned the billing, okay, we all agreed to do an audit. And we went to great detail about that audit. And then obviously some of the council members changed their mind and the mayor didn't want to have it. Because that audit will come down to the truth of a listen. If they could justify those hours, the law firm could justify it. I have no problem with that. But we have an obligation to find out the truth of these expenditures. Because we have a library down in Hiawatha that needs to be refurbished, which is probably at least a million dollars. I'm on that committee. We have a lot of other big projects that have to be taken care of. We have in the police department over $800,000 in overtime. We have to do some major reorganization in the police department. And we're wasting this money on this case. So when I sometimes get very involved with this, I have a passion like you do, because we have to save the taxpayers' money. And thank you. Okay, can I, uh, Mr. Rosen, I got to respond. First and foremost, Mr. Rosenthal, I know you're, you're upset and you're angry, but a lot of these, this cost has to do with the gentleman, Captain James Carifi. He was ordered in 2013 to hand over the information. He chose not to. That was one court order. Again, second court order, third court order, now we're in our fourth court order. And he hasn't handed everything over. The cost really pertained to him not following the court orders from the judges. Okay? So that's where your costs are, are coming from. All he had to do in December 2013 was hand everything over and it been, that would have been it. <coughs> Therefore, we're here where we are now. You make it sound easy as if we're a Target or we're a, a department store. We're not. We're a township. And what transpired was the fact that he did go into the server and he deleted stuff from the server. The hard drive, you're saying? No, hard drive and server. Clever. Department. Okay. No, excuse me. Mr. I let you speak. I didn't Oh, know no, no. I just want to clarify. That's all. Okay. I want to clarify that. So, therefore, the costs are, are being... Right. Created by a gentleman who just will not listen to any court orders. So I say to you, wouldn't you be upset that if someone told you, especially a judge, you have to be deposed, you have to hand over the information, and it doesn't happen. So now, when you hear, and Mr. Boy made a good point with the prosecutor's office, I wish it were that easy they would take it over. And I wish it were that easy that they would pay for things. Well, during the course, they don't want to pay for nothing. But I'm not going to speak on behalf of, of the um, prosecutor's office. But as a township mayor, we have to get back our information. We cannot allow anybody to take information. And that's where we're at right now. Just let us have our information back, and then it will go from there. That's how simple it is. That's all that had to happen. But you're, you're talking about costs. First of all, the township attorney did not charge $800,000 for the Karifi case. Okay, so, so I, I how just, much did he charge? Him? Well, you, 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 throughout the whole course of the year, just take his bills and you can add them up for administrative costs, for you know a whole bunch of costs. 800000 had nothing was not part of the James uh, James Captain Karifi case. There's there's a whole there's, you know if you get all the bills, which they seem to have them all. Let me just follow up one thing. But it isn't eight hundred thousand dollars. I never said any. You heard never. Well, no, I'm just saying. I'm just. I'm just relaying the message back. But the other, but the other question resolved. But here's the I bottom line. And I, you know what? If we have to do this every meeting. We have to do it every meeting. Council President Paul Karifi happens to be the brother of James Karifi, who's trying to stop the township from moving forward with getting our information by suing me by going after the township attorney, he has to recuse himself, and he has chose not to. Mayor, I have repeatedly, repeatedly stated when I've asked for legal bills, I would like all unredacted legal bills with the exception of anything pertaining to my brother. It's on the record. It's been repeated a number of times. Secondly, what you just stated is a lie, and you know it, because anyone in What's here... Anyone in here can go Oprah court documents that those items were returned. There are court 
documents. Okay. We were provided. Okay. I'm talking. I'm talking. There are court documents that are out there that state that those items that the mayor said were not returned were returned. Okay? And you have the chief of police under oath in superior court stating that the captain did not have access to that. You also have the chief of police under oath in superior court in front of a judge stating that there will an investigation was completed and there will be no administrative charges. All of a sudden, a couple weeks later there are. Okay. So I, I will comment on the So you have a chief of police under oath in superior court you keep trying the case here. stating yeah, things absolutely. right so wait one second so, 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 and then one second no, no, no. Oh, we well. just had an individual stand up here for 5 minutes and not go into the merits of a case and now we're wasting a half hour I agree. by playing the I whole just... case from the beginning to the end. Can we go forward? I no. agree. I agree. But, but no. the, the mayor wanted to bring it up. He did no, not I go to the mayor. The mayor. We're done. Let's move forward. The mayor brought it up. No, I agree. Let's go. I agree. I agree. Me. I agree. I agree. I agree with okay, you. Okay. Can we Next. Move on. Let me just say one thing. No, no we, we're not going to. No, on. we're going to move on. Move on. Please move on. Let's move on. Go ahead. Move someone on. Someone makes a comment about it. You, right. I want Let's to move on. It. Let's move on. We have tapes of the meetings, Rich. Don't worry. Bill, you were requested before. <coughs> Pat Patacha, 182 Hawkins Avenue. Yeah, this is not going to make your day either. <laughs> On February 19th of 2015, I once again attended the Carifi court case. To my surprise, Special Counsel Stephen Trimboli was there representing the township of Parsippany, advising the judge that Chief Phillips was named in a civil lawsuit and hasn't had time to speak with an attorney. Postponement requested. Although, from what I understood, he had plenty of time before the 19th of this month to do so and to speak with an attorney. The judge didn't understand why special counsel was needed to be sent. I asked the town council, why was Mr. Tramboli there? since you voted against his appointment for 2015, Resolution R 2015-017. I personally went up to Mr. Tramboli and asked him who hired him to appear on behalf of Parsippany. His response, the township. When I asked who the township was, he advised Mr. Inglesino <laughs> hired him. Another bill. Residents of Parsippany should be made aware of what Mayor Barbario and Mr. Inglesino are doing. It is my opinion, and that of many others in this, that this has become, and I use this phrase and I hate it, a pissing match between Mayor Barbario and Mr. Inglesino against the town council, and therefore against the residents of Parsippany who elected them. Town Council votes no to Trimbley, and then Mr. Inglesino has the nerve to hire him to go to this court case. Oh boy, with Mayor Barbario's approval. This is a slap in the face to the residents of Parsippany and our elected officials. It is my opinion that Mayor Barbario and Mr. Inglesino are like children in a playground, bullying everyone else. This has got to stop. I asked my neighbors and fellow residents to come to the next council meeting and voice your concerns. We, the taxpayers, are the ones paying Mr. Inglesino's salary. For example, Mr. Inglesino's budgeted amount for 2014 was $420,000. He exceeded that by another 400,000 plus. He has exceeded his budgeted amounts in the last four or so years with Mayor Barbario's approval. 
Our town council has not reappointed Mr. Inglesino as township attorney for the last two years, only to have Mayor Barbario keep him as a holdover at the expense of the taxpayers of Parsippany. Parsippany can no longer afford Mr. Inglesino and Mayor Barbario. The legacy I see for the Barbario administration will be one of deceit, harassment, and intimidation. I end with this. Governor Chris Christie a few years ago gave Dr. Seitz the poster boy title for superintendents. I wonder how Governor Christie feels about his old college roommate being named poster boy for township attorneys. I will email this to the governor tomorrow morning. The disgust and dismay I feel, I cannot tell you. You should see it on my face. Okay, I'm going to respond to you, Pat. I really don't want to respond. Well, if you're going to come up here and talk, you're going to get a response. I really don't want to respond. You're going to get one. Anybody. I know I am, Mr. Mayor Barbario, because you are the because, No, no, no. What you said is absolutely false. Who doesn't false. have to listen to anybody. Oh, no, that's not true. You don't that listen is not true. to your town council. That is not true. You don't listen to You need to read our ordinance and why Mr. Trimbley is allowed oh, to I go represent the town. I know about ordinance 4. But you didn't do that. So, special counsel. However, so you that, are that being said, to see doesn't the it kind of doesn't it kind of strike you? No, 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 she still has, she's still mayor. She's still, right. she still has thirty seconds. Okay, I'll let her have a thirty. Thank you. I really. Don't You're going to get a response, Pat. Like it or not. Mayor Bugger, you can respond all you want. My response will be in the paper tomorrow. Okay, when you have the guts. Okay, when you have the guts to sit down and have one on one. And tell me exactly what you have done, have done to make. Like that, so yeah, I'll you've done that. exactly. You so, have but, but that's done. That, time's up. That's beside the point, Pat, Patricia. Mr. DePiero. It's kind of funny that every time. And don't say every time I am it, like this. Oh, you know, Pat. You spoke. Okay, time's up. Time. Four minutes. Time's up. He kept interfering with your time is up, Pat. You had your five minutes. Time's up. He interfered. Your time's up, Pat. So. Your time's I up, Pat. Want additional time, Pat? Your time's up. Time's up. Time's up. Okay. Thank you, Pat. Okay. First and foremost, Pat, I always know. I notice several things every time we go to court, um, and yeah. you, you make several comments. You come in, make the comments, and Trembley. Then I then then after Trembley goes there, we get 1099 operas, We get this. We get that because he's representing the town uh, and the residents and stuff like that for our wrongdoing. It doesn't bother you, though. That doesn't bother you, that someone can do what they've done. And, and you know, Council, Council Stanton, Stanton said it right. You guys want to play it out here in the council meeting. I don't want to. Let it be played out in the courts. At the expense of the tax. Uh, well, well the, the bottom line is, Patricia, is the fact that this is the way it is. The prosecutor's office is the one that recommended an administrative hearing, not us. If we're going to continue to come up here and attack, then we have to play it out here. But I don't want to play it out here. Let the courts decide. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. Frank Cochi, 3800 Rachel Terrace, Pinebrook. Once here, I'm again uh, inquiring about the uh, red light district identified to my business in this township. Uh, I want to put on record, I am a licensed private detective. I have been retained by business people in the community, along with concerned citizens. So I will be conducting an investigation pertaining to this allegation. And I've already proceeded to do so. It's on a pro bono basis. And in case anybody doesn't understand what pro bono means, it doesn't only mean no charge. It means for the good of the people. The good of the people. And what I did, I... Uh, Utilize surveillance equipment, infrared video cameras, body microphones. Filmed the location identified by Nancy Snyder as a red light district area. And to no avail, no ladies of the evening walking about, no pimps, no pimp getting out of a car smacking a female around, no drug use in between buildings. No shots fired, no crime scene units, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. What I did see red lights were police cars patrolling the back of commercial establishments. And they were brake lights. They were doing their job. Okay? Now, 
and go further, nobody on this township council has ever addressed the community, the public, and let them know that we do not have a red light district in this township. And I brought that to your attention, Mr. Peluso, and I asked you to do that for me. You're the, the president of the Chamber of Commerce. The president of the Chamber of Commerce. If anybody should, could be, should be concerned, it should be you. Because you got your, your interest should be business. But then again, if you're going to wear two or three hats, as president of, chair, uh, of uh, the Commerce, the Chamber of Commerce, vice chairman of the Chamber of Commerce, and vice president of the council, and I say take one of them hats off. Because you can't. There's no possible way you could be impartial on either side. Now, yes, I do wear a body mic, and I continue to wear a body mic when I enter the township of Parsippany. And it's terrible I have to do that. It's terrible that people have to say, Frankie, before I can shake your hand, can I pat you down? But I have to do it. I have to do it because I see the evil, the evil and the hatred here, and there should be no need for it. You've got three police officers here. Three brother police officers. You've got a man with an engine, uh, a degree, I believe, in the electrical engineering, an accountant, a gentleman that represents banking. Come on, these are brains. These are brains. You've got to, if, any, if you get rid of the hot dog truck, fine. And don't worry about Mr. Humor, good humor. Get the olive branch and extend the <coughs> olive branch and help each other out. And I'm going to tell you something that got back to me. Mr. Karifi, I commend you in one respect. To sit here and hear your family name mentioned constantly and constantly, it would kill me. It would destroy my intestine. It's not fair to you. And I'll say that as a gentleman and as a brother officer. It isn't fair to you. And I will say yes. I wear a body mic, but at times if I want to take that mic off because somebody might get emotional over a family member, I'll shut it off, okay, because I have that decency in me. But what I'm asking you is please, end all this. Let it go. Let the court, we're coming here, we're coming before a legislative body. We're not coming before a judicial branch of government. And that's what we're starting to see. We're starting to see a judicial branch of government here. Please. Let it go. Let it go. Let Aurora come in. Let them do what they got to do, but let it go for the fairness of the people here. This is a beautiful town. I keep telling you that. I keep telling you that. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Nicholas Homiak, uh, Lake Hiawatha. Uh, very briefly, I'd like to comment on Mr. Karifi's situation. Two words. A fake scandal and a disparity of treatment, and it's so obvious. Now, the mayor just said, we're not Home Depot, we're not Target. Well, Mr. Inglesino compared this town or the danger it's in <clears throat> Boy, I'll tell you. with using those two examples. But tell me, we want the information back. What information? No specifics, but... The information's out there. It's out there in cyberspace. And even if someone in the town, something happened to them, how could one prove beyond a reasonable doubt it was related to Captain Karifi's computer download like all the other police officers do? And it is a disgrace. And as long as taxpayers' money is paying for this baloney back and forth, this fake scandal, we do have a right to come up here, like Pat says, and voice our opinion. Absolutely. Now, another subject. Uh, I was at the uh, planning board the other night, and the Yogi Society got their uh, permit for their temple. And I understand that there's religious laws and everything, but I feel that this town didn't do enough to try and place that temple in a different landscape. I, that, I walked in that neighborhood. I looked where it was supposed to go. I couldn't picture it. Uh, I guess it's a good thing for, for, for the people. And with this 
religious law that President Clinton made, it's almost impossible, but not, but not really so. It's expensive. But I think that that, that neighborhood was just routed over for uh, a, a hope that this thing, this Hindu temple, hopefully doesn't turn into like an amusement park or a Disneyland over there, and those people aren't disrespected. But there, there was an example in Robbinsville, New Jersey, which is about 25 miles south of here, where the mayor of a town, they had a temple that's even bigger than this, but the mayor worked with different elements in the community, and he had it put in a commercial district, like a vacant office place, and it was out of the way, and it's not bothering anybody. They have their temple and, and everything, and it's, it's not bothering anyone. And the trees came up. I believe the landscape architect for the temple said there was at least 84 trees on the property, and perhaps 13 of the trees Nothing's known about there. It may be saved. But the point is, it seems in, in Persephone, it's supposed to be a tree town, for I don't know how long it's been going on. We take down a lot of trees, but when you ask about the amount of trees on a property, nobody knows how many trees will be planted elsewhere in the town, in the park or something, to compensate for the trees. Nobody knows. There's, there's even something about it in the master plan update. So I, I think that the, the township should pursue that, that the, when these trees are taken down, even on my street or night when I moved in, they put this huge house there, same thing. It looks out of place in the neighborhood. And all the trees, there's at least, I think, six trees that were taken down. I don't... Uh, know if they were ever re replaced or not, but things like that that the town is supposed to be doing that they don't do. Sleep, st uh, st steep slope protections, water view with steep slope, didn't matter. Had a thing in the variance board the other day, steep slope protection, the guy got a variance. So we have a master plan, but it's silly putty. 30 seconds. All right. That, that's, that's all. I just wanted to. Uh, there's like, so many things I want to talk about that I couldn't uh, possibly. I want to respond to uh, the, the meeting last night. Um, you heard me ask questions with regards to the religious land use uh, laws. And I asked the question if they meet the requirements of that w law. And they did. They met all the requirements, uh, from what I understand. And, and therefore, to deny it, but it really got the township in a lot more trouble. But let's, let's get back to you saying as the mayor I should take them around and maybe grab a piece of commercial property. They did that already. And they were they, they, in a residential neighborhood. Uh, but it was already a religious institution prior to that for Small year that after year. Used to walk. But they met the requirements of federal law. There has been cases, and I don't know if it's New Jersey, and I, I mean, I, Councilman Valori, where the town was sued. And they lost. And guess what happened? They had to pay for the land that they purchased because it goes to federal court. It doesn't go to a – goes to go to – but they I, – I, I do believe that they will meet the requirements. They have met the requirements, excuse me. They will be good neighbors. And, you know, believe me, it was a hard decision for a lot of us to make. But the alternative with the religious land use laws were not good and in favor of the town. I, I understand that, but I just, it was, it was like it was a... But you're saying to me that I should go to a commercial property. They did go to a commercial property on Palmer Road, the old Toshiba building. Uh, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't fly. I, I hope, I really do ho hope it works out. I, I really do, but, but the scale of that temple in that neighborhood, and it's, it's not really a, a well, church about as the we master know plan. it or a well, synagogue as we know it. It's, you say, yeah, it's about the master plan. Well, they meet the requirements. That was, that was the issue. They didn't need any major variances. They didn't need to go to the zoning board. These, these people aren't even from Persephone. No, that's not true. A lot of them were from Persephone. And, you know, most of them weren't as far well, as... I don't know about if most of them. I mean, I didn't go time, and calculate how many were from Persephone or not. Most of them weren't. Well, actually, Councilman Valor and I, <laughs> we voted together. Yeah, as a matter of fact, what was the lawsuit that the uh, town had to pay in return? Well, I think what happened was, and it's, I have the town planner. They, 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 
They denied the application, and it met all the requirements of the religious land use laws. And I think the town had to pay uh, seven million dollars. Several million dollars, yeah. yeah. Okay, time's up. Yeah, Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ada Vesake. I'm at Four Fox Chase Drive. Is this on? Yes. Okay. yes. We can hear you. Just have to speak into it. Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Karifi, I have a question for you because I sit here and I'm literally embarrassed being here listening to you and I turn red and I don't normally turn red. So uh, I have a question um, and this is for you, Mr. Karifi. Whose meeting is this? It's a council meeting. So who are the people that have to be here at your meeting? The council. Okay, the rest are guests? That's correct. So, as your guests, I would assume that when you put your gavel down, that your guests listen to you. Am I correct? That's, I, I've been president of boards before, and I'm assuming it works the same way. Yes. So, based on that information, maybe if they're not going to abide by the council rules and regulation and your gavel, maybe you should not uninvite some of these people so that way business could be conducted and not this back and forth. And that's all I have to say. I've got to respond to that because I know you. that was intended for me. And it wasn't really intended well, yeah, the, 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 for a The gavel was, spa was smacked at me. It's not just you. Yes, it's no, no, everybody no. that goes So he's going to start uninviting people because I didn't listen to the gavel? Then you filed to run for election? I think you did. I, I think I read it on the uh, well, Georgia election. Well, do because that's going to be your running mate. For that's going to be your running Come mate. on, maybe something no, no, will no, change. That's exactly more like, people like me no, 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 but, run but, for right. election. When you come and you're, you're trying to you're trying to hush the mayor, and the mayor's to be heard. That's it. That, those are, you can't just hush people because they don't listen to a guy. Mayor, she was talking about abiding by rules. Oh. Yes, she was. Exactly what I was about. Well, the mayor is to be heard on the same those same rules. That's right. So I know you filed. So. Nice. Dave Kaplan, 263 Intervale. I'm not running for anything. I know you're not. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, Mr. Merrick, just a quick question. I'm not going to beat you up or anything. I just, now that the, the lawsuit is, has been dismissed, uh, I'd like to know where we are, where you are, what your plans are with reconvening the committee that you formed to look into purchasing the Waterview Tract as open space? Well, hold well, on, hold on. Hold on. It, 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 the, the lawsuit's been dismissed. Best. That does not mean it's that they don't have a right of appeal. Um, so uh, so they, they still have a right of appeal. In fact, they could, you know, there's a few things that they could do. So, yes, the lawsuit was dismissed, but I don't th think that that means that, that it's completely over. I don't know that it's not, but you, you can't assume that it will. So I don't think that we can okay. talk about future plans outside of the context of prospective or additional litigation. All right, I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, well, like, educate me. What's the time? I, I thought I heard you say 45 days. All right, so if I come back in 45 days and there's no lawsuit, we can go forward with Well, let's see if they make a motion for reconsideration. I don't know. Township Council. Not Township Council. I mean, Attorney. Can I meet with Dave? Sure, you can certainly, you know, meet with community groups. I just, I just wanted to make clear that that the, the context within which uh, the matter is to be discussed is, is, although the litigation has been dismissed, it's not necessarily over. They have rights of appeal. Understood. Okay. Yeah, no, I know that. All right. All right. Thank Come you. Come on, office tomorrow. All right. Thank you. I'll sign in a minute, Mr. President. Roy Mesmer, 10 Drumlin Drive. Three things in life that really tick me off. People who insult my intelligence, hypocrite, people that put their hands in my pocket. There's only two people in this world that can put their hands in my pockets, my wife and my son. So Mr. Councilman DiPiero, Mr. Barbera, you two are hypocrites. Because I was here December 2005 or 2006 when you two voted for the JIF. And you broke the Faulkner Act. And you should have been thrown off the council. So let me set that record straight there. Because there's nothing but lies here and lies here and prevarications. If the Captain Karifi stole that computer and it has it home, wouldn't this fine officer here have instructed to go to his house and arrest him? If I stole something from any one of you guys and you knew it, wouldn't you be sending an officer to my house with a search warrant or just break down my door? And you should be able to. 
Because I've never stole anything from anybody. Some girls don't say I stole their hearts, but you know, that's the story. <laughs> now that I find them possible. The way I look now, you're right. The way I used to look, but you still haven't brought in your picture. I should have uh, mine. Yeah, I was a lot. <laughs> yeah. You'll see it. I'm going to bring it in. I was ready for Vietnam because I wasn't coming back here in a body bag. <laughs> so Roy knows my tongue's only drive. So where am I? No Bible tonight because you're not going to get the truth anyway. But I hate it. I hate people that insult my I want to thank ADP and also Proxy Smith Klein who donate, donate money to this town on a regular basis. It's too bad the landlords don't think, donate money to this town. It's because, boy, do they walk out with a lot of money from this town. My staff put together a report that I gave to the mayor's office this week, Mr. Creepy. I have it right here. I'm running out of money. I didn't make copies for you guys like last time. The boarding houses, the homes that should be taxed as a parking complex. This, I'll be waiting for his staff to get back to me on this. And this is good, because we found another website called Air ENB. It's bed and breakfast. We've got, got one or two in this town. It's kind of hard to follow Rich Rosenthal and Pat. Rich Rosenthal is a dynamite individual. So I had to do Mr. Mayor's job the other night. I got a call from a gentleman, Dan, who played ball with Mr. Barbero, with Mayor Barbero years ago. I had to meet with him at 7 o'clock at, at uh, Paul's Diner last week. A fine gentleman, another fine resident that I got to know in this town. Beautiful individual. He has a boarding house and an over-occupied house on his block. But the administration and, and I guess Jennifer Collins' department never got back to him. I got a phone call from another fine resident in this town. You want to get something done? Talk to Mesler. Topic number three, Mr. Angel Sinos, 1099s. They're, rip, they're, they're kind of deceptive, ladies and gentlemen, because as you all know, the town didn't break the law on this one. 1099s are on the cash basis. That's what this $822,382 is. It's on the cash basis. But we as taxpayers owe Mr. Ingrosino another $80,000 as of December 31st, 2014 which is not going to be paid until sometime this year. So I want to note that that number is now nearing 900000 I'll put it in red because it must be in the red if it didn't pay them. So now it's about 900000 mm -hmm. No, I don't think so. And I reviewed the Aurora bills because I'm a very good resident. I don't ask for copies. I sat in Nancy's office and I looked at them and I told them up. They came out to well over 600000 <coughs> I can't wait to Aurora next week. Because there's three people in this town that have no credibility with me, and you know who they are. Well, you didn't know the last one, but Aurora. So now the real bad news. Another fine resident brought it up earlier. Two people who sit on the planning board up here to, that are here tonight voted for the temple. Well, it's too bad they didn't attend Roy Mesmer's Ripple class. Where would you say that? Are you? Or L-U-I-T-A, religious land no. 30 seconds. They did not, we could have won that case, and I'm, I only have 30 seconds. If, 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 why did they lose? And the only temple that did in this town, because Zimmer has deep pockets, good German company. Why did they lose that commercial property? Why didn't they get approval over there? Okay, my time's up. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Anybody want to respond to this? I'm going to respond to the okay. one. Okay. Respond to you. Okay. Well, wait. Are you done? Well, you done? You done? Uh, there you go. Your time. Right there. Used to work like that. Uh, okay. Well, yeah. well, I don't. It's, it's, it's first and foremost. Exactly. Uh, you're right. I think. I think you're right on the similar part. They had deep pockets. And we certainly have deep pockets. Well, it's kind of funny. I that's what I was going to bring up. You know, I don't mind spending more money on that, but. That being said, let's get back to one thing, though. You did make a, um, the gentleman that you met with. First, I met with him a while ago, and he is a friend of mine. And I, it, from what I understand, things have progressed. I met with him again the day before. Um, the fact is this, though, Roy, you know, ah, I'll say to you off the record what he said to me, because it's not right. But the fact of the matter is it is being held. Don't sit here and say the township isn't doing the job, because we are. Okay? I mean, you know, you can nod your head all you want. I know you... you uh, okay, well, well, no, that's different. You got to go to that. No, I take that back. Anyway. 
That's it. And, and Mr. Mesmer, again, just for the record, um, and I think you know this, is that uh, uh, the monies that are paid on a 1099 uh, to my firm are not just for fees. They would also include uh, professional fees from other uh, experts and so forth that would be passed through. They also included last year the monies that were paid into my trust account uh, for the flood victims. Um, I, that, that it's just the fact of the matter is those numbers are all included in the 1099s. I refer you to Joe Kowalczyk's presentation uh, last spring. Um, and also the 149 that you had from a couple of years ago only included, you know, my firm did not include the previous firm, so that number is actually understated. So you may want to correct that as well. Jerry, you got to tap the mic. Mic off? No, tap, tap the mic. Tap the mic. Tap it. Tap it. There. I think it's off. No, it's speaking. Tap it again. Tap it. Tap it. There, there you go. go. Hey, there we go. All right. <laughs> Very briefly, brought up the fact that a lot of money was spent on the R&D project, which didn't have to be spent at all if you folks hadn't put up a tremendous campaign to keep it from doing the Waterview project. That wouldn't have cost us a nickel, and it would have been rateable. Now you spent a whole bunch of money that you're complaining about because you did that. Ooh. Last month, a situation was brought before the council relative to some water pipes that broke someplace in some development. And it was kicked around as to who's responsible. You talk about Glenmont Commons? Yeah. Glenmont, right? So okay. we found that the, it was stated at the time that the council had no business, the town didn't owe the people any money, but then the discussion got into a moral obligation. Now, my question is, did Mr. Carifi or Mr. Valori speak to Mr. Morseberg about his moral obligation? To answer that question, Mr. DePiro is the one that brought up moral obligation, and I felt, as he did, whatever we could do to help these folks out as best we can. So I followed his uh, lead. I tried, I tried several th things, Jerry, to, uh, to resolve that to help the people out. Um, I tried to find out if we could uh, allow the residents to put pressure-reducing valves at the curb so there have to be less pressure on the pipe from the curb all the way into their homes because they're putting pressure reducing valves in the homes and the pipes are bursting outside the homes. Um, and I was told that um, if we do it for that development, we have to do it for everybody. You know, it has to be change the ordinance to allow that to happen, first of all. Um, I, I was, uh, my second uh, attempt was maybe the township and Mr. Mossberg could chip in and pay for these pressure reducing valves and help the people out. Again, if we did it there, we'd have to do it throughout the town. And so that, that idea was uh, not going to, to fly either. The other thing is uh, the township did look into my proposal um, to put uh, swap the pipes down at the bottom at Old Dover Road and put the low pressure pipes at, to feed the bottom of Glenmount Commons and, and then reconnect the high pressure pipe further up the hill. They finally did that study that I had requested a year ago. They did it recently and invited me to the water department to look over their plans. Um, if they did that, their study shows that um, um, the water pressure going up the hill would be below 40 PSI after it's passed maybe 40 homes. So the, the cost would have been prohibitive and it would have not just been uh, substituting in one location, the pipe would have to be substituted in five locations because it distributes all over the other, other streets. So that was not feasible either. 
But I did try to find some alternative uh, that the township could do to help those residents, and uh, and uh, there's nothing that, uh, that that we could do. I tried. Okay. Appreciate that. Just a last point. In the past few weeks, there have been some stories in the newspapers about municipal costs to pensions and so forth and so forth. And they listed the kind of payouts that are given to employees of the town for unused sick time, vacation time, and then they listed the pensions. And I guess my question is, or my concern is, we have a few people on the board who are doing that right now, collecting municipal pensions at a considerable amount of money. And yet they'll sit there and complain about the amount of money an attorney makes for working when they're not working and collecting that amount of money. Thank you very much. Okay. <clears throat> First off, to your item about Waterview, okay, from the get-go, I was against that project right from the start, and that was a quality of life issue, Mr. Manning. <clears throat> so that was my belief. So if you say, oh, why did we waste people's money and attorney fees fighting that project, that was something that I... Mm -hmm strongly believed in that that would affect the quality of life for many residents in our town. You're done. I am speaking now. <laughs> Secondly, as far as the remedy for that, the engineer was here and he also brought up the point about the manufacturer of the pipe. And if we could send them a sample, which it was in turn stated that a sample was sent, and that if there was a problem, a defect in that pipe, that they would pay for that. Okay, so I did bring that up. And thirdly, if you want to accuse myself and Mr. Valori of collecting pensions, we sacrificed and put our lives on the line for over 25 years, and that is something that we were entitled to. Okay? I do not, you do not see my name on that list, okay, for these high pensions. I worked for the county. The county did not, does not pay with some of these other towns, but I worked. I worked for 25 years. I put my life on the line, something I don't know if you ever have, but I did to protect residents of this county. So thank you very much. Can I say one thing? Go ahead. Hey, Jerry, just so we're not biased here, and I, I'm not picking on Mr. DePiro, there's actually three of us up here that get a pension. Mr. DePiro, who worked for the state, myself, and I'm not on that list, obviously, um, you know, Paul Carifi and hopefully Brian Stanton when he finished out his career, along with Ellen, and hopefully... I'm not vested. Paula, I was going to say. Okay, I, I wish you were. <laughs> Mayor, they changed your pension. Yeah, they changed my pension. Changed around. I was so I'm not going to begrudge well. anyone who obviously <laughs> wanted to be a business administrator, a CFO, in law enforcement. So the reality is, this is the line of work we went into. And don't be grudged that, obviously, at the end of the day, after 25, 30 years, there is obviously a pension. And again, like Mr. Karifi had stated, in law enforcement, you're risking your life. You see it all the time in the paper. You see it on YouTube. So hopefully that answers your question. Thank you. OK, see no one else come forward. I entertain a motion and the public here. Motion. motion made by Mr. Stanton. Second. Seconded by Mr. DePiro. Roll call. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Peluso. Yes. Mr. Stanton. Yes. Mr. Valori. Yes. Mr. Carifi. Yes. Consent agenda. Be resolve all items listed with an asterisk or considered to be routine, non-controversial by Township Council. Be approved by one motion. There will be no separate discussion on these items unless a council member so requests, which case the item will be removed from the consent agenda considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. Second. Motion made by Mr. Stanton, seconded by Mr. DePiro. Roll call. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Peluso. Yes. Mr. Stanton. Yes. Mr. Valori. Yes. Mr. Carifi. Yes. Okay, approval of minutes, non consent agenda. Make a motion to approve. Motion made by Mr. Stanton. Second. Seconded by Mr. DePiro. Roll call. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Mr. Peluso? Yes. Mr. Stanton? Yes. Mr. Valori? Yes. Mr. Carifi? Yes. Township office reports. OK. 
Okay, ordinances for introductions, Mr. Valori. Ordinance 2015-02, an ordinance of the Township Council of the Township of Recipient Troy Hills, Morris County, New Jersey, amending ordinance 2014-28, authorizing the sale of leasehold rights in block 420, lot one, and the admissible right on way along Grange Road adjacent to Interstate 80. Be it resolved that the above ordinance be introduced, read by title, and passed on first reading at a meeting of the Township Council of the Township of Sibley Troy Hills held on February 24th, 2015, and that said ordinance be further considered for second reading and final passage at a meeting to be held on March 17th, 2015 at 7.30 p.m. prevailing time, or as soon thereafter as the matter be reached at the municipal building in said township in which their time all persons interested shall be an opportunity to, the her to be heard said ordinance. Be further resolved that the clerk be authorized and directed to advertise said ordinance with a notice of introduction thereof being published in official newspaper according to law. Second. Motion made by Mr. Valori, seconded by Mr. Stan. Roll call. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Peluso. Yes. Mr. Stan. Yes. Mr. Valori. Yes. Mr. Carifi. Yes. Resolution 2015-031. Resolution of the Township Council of the Township of Parsippany Troy Hills awarding contract for property and casualty insurance services. Second. Motion made by Mr. DePiro, seconded by Mr. Stanton. Roll call. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Peluso. Yes. Mr. Stanton? Yes. Mr. Valori? Yes. Mr. Carifi? Yes. Mr. Peluso? Resolution 2015-065, uh, Resolution of the Township Council of the Township of Parsippany Troy Hills, authorizing a grant application for the Governor's Council on Alcoholism and Drug Abuse for a fiscal grant cycle July 2015 to June 2016. Motion to approve. Second. Motion made by Mr. Peluso, seconded by Mr. DePiro. Roll call. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Peluso. Yes. Mr. Stanton. Yes. Mr. Valori. Yes. Mr. Carifi. Yes. Or 2015-066. Resolution Township Council, Township Parsippany, Troy Hills, authorizing budget appropriation reserve transfers. Second. Second. Motion made by Mr. Stanton, seconded by Mr. DePiro. Roll call. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Peluso. Yes. Mr. Stanton. Yes. Mr. Valori. Yes. Mr. Carifi. Yes. Uh, Council President, I, at Good. this moment, I just would like, um, I asked, one of the reasons why I asked, um, Ann Gucci uh, uh, to be here is because going forward, this is how we'll do all the transfers. You'll see where it's coming from, where it's going to, and what it's for. Okay. So, uh, uh, okay. So there's no misunderstandings. Right. Yes. Thank you. No, no, no. It, we, you know, I know that it's a small amount, but it's, you know, us doing our uh, respectfully. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Not looking for that, but just okay. on the record. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, R2015-067. Resolution of the Township Council of the Township of Sibley Troy Hills approving a new limousine license for SRL Ride LLC. Second. Motion made by Mr. Valori, seconded by Mr. Stanton. Roll call. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Peluso. Yes. Mr. Stanton. Yes. Mr. Valori. Yes. Mr. Carifi. Yes. This time I entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Make a motion. Motion made by Mr. Valori, seconded by Mr. Stanton. Roll call. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Peluso. Yes. Mr. Stanton. Yes. Mr. Valori. No, right. Mr. Valori? Yes. Mr. Karifi? Yes. Good night. All right, good.